Good afternoon. Welcome to the Level 1 NCA Information Seminar. My name is Sadie van der Kray. I am the Arkinaliza for Year 11. Um, at the back there, we also have Calandra Field, who I am partnered with at Year 11. There is Lydie Jong, who is the Year 10 Arkinaliza, and Ken Allington, who is the Associate Director of Achievement and Attainment at Massey High School. The word Arkina is um, a new role at the school this year. And um, the word Arkina means to challenge, encourage, and urge upwards. And that very much underpins um, the focus of our role at Massey High School. Um, we oversee the achievement for a particular year level and are making sure that all students achieve to, that, to their potential. The purpose of today's session um, is to really explain what NCA is. For many of you, you will not have done NCA when you were at school. Some of you who have come from overseas will have come from a totally different um, examination system. So we hope that every um, person leaves um, the session today understanding a bit more about NCA. We hope that we've decoded some of the technical jargon within it, but most importantly, that you leave knowing how you can better support your child at home. So the first thing to note um, with what NCA is, is how many credits you need to get. You might have heard your um, child talking about credits a lot. So 80 is the magic number. That's what students need to have um, attained by the end of level one. So really it's about understanding now how you get those credits. So each subject area will be divided into topics. And each topic um, has a set amount of credits that gets assigned to it. And this is largely based on how many um, learning hours will be allocated to that particular topic. So you can see here the exemplar that we've got up is Geography 101. Some of those um, units have four credits um, assigned to them and some have three. So when a, a student um, will study for maybe sort of three, four weeks a particular topic, they are then assessed at the end of it, that would be an internal, and if they achieve those credits, they would get four credits. Um, as you can see at the very far of that, it is indicated whether they are internal or external. So external are a bit more like the old style examination systems where they are assessed at the end of the year, they'll be in the school hall, and those papers are sent away to be externally assessed. The internal ones are done in the classroom. Um, as you can see, this geography course has 21 credits available in total. So if we look at that, how that works with their level one, students at Massey High School take five subjects. Um, and those, on average, have roughly 20 credits um, assigned to them. So this particular student has, um, you can see those add up to 115. So what that really means from um, your child's point of view, they don't need to get all the credits um, to pass NCA level one, but this gives a little leeway in case um, you know, mistakes do happen, they perhaps don't uh, achieve some things. It's not all or nothing because there's that little bit of um, area to go. So um, at level one, students have to do an English, maths and science. Um, the science can be a geography, but as you can see here, then there are two option subjects within that. Okay, assessment dates. Obviously, there is um, continuous assessment throughout the year. These are available um, through the parent portal. You can get this digitally, and that will really help um, your child to manage their um, study at home, knowing when these assessments are going to be. Um, this is a live assessment calendar as well, which is probably better than some of the paper versions you've got because we only need a COVID lockdown or lots of events happening in school and sometimes assessment dates aren't fixed, they have to be moved. Um, they can definitely be synced as well to a smartphone, which means that students can have reminders and things like that coming up. Okay, so earlier on we talked about the 80 credits that you need overall. But also, to pass NCA Level 1, you need 10 literacy and 10 numeracy credits. Now, these aren't separate papers. These are actually um, sort of assigned to different units of work that they will be studying anyway. It's like a recognition of the skills that they've completed. So again, if we go back to that geography example, um, you can see here in that column next to where it says internal and external, we can see literacy and numeracy credits that are, um, that are toggled there. 
So what this means is, if we look at the highlighted one, that if a student passes this paper, they have the four credits that is um, going towards the 80 credits, so they would only need 76 still to go, but they would also get four numeracy and four literacy credits. So those are, 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 are accounting towards those um, 10 that they need to get. So each topic, when it's assessed at the end, will be awarded a mark, and these will be either achieved with excellence, achieved with merit, achieved or not achieved. Um, so it's important to recognise subject endorsements now as well. So subject endorsements are where a student gets 14 credits, of which three have to be from one of the external exams, at the level of merit or excellence. And this is where we start to get thinking about the quality of the credits. Um, so certainly moving through the school as we start to get into level two and level three, this becomes really important when we start to think about the university pathways um, and actually those really competitive subjects at university to get into. So when we're talking university um, where they're asking for rank scores of 300, that's where you're really looking for a good portion of your credits to be at excellence. I also personally like the subject endorsements for when the students have a particular flair in a particular subject. It's good that that is recognised. So they may not be considering themselves a particularly academic student, but may have a real passion for dance. And it's awesome that that is recognised, that they get that particular subject endorsed with excellence. Because, you know, every student should flourish at something in school. On top of subject endorsements, what we also have are certificate endorsements. And this is for the overall um, certificate at that particular level. So um, as you know, 80 is the magic number. But if they get at least 50 credits across their five subjects at either a merit or excellence, they will have NCA level one endorsed with merit or endorsed with excellence. So that's another really awesome thing for people to, um, to be um, aiming for. So we said earlier on, we would, like to, we would like you all to leave with knowing how you can help your child at home. Attendance is probably one of the really big keys to that. If they're not in school, they are missing out on the learning in class, those valuable conversations that happen as part of the learning that help with that deeper understanding or connecting things to the theory. Um, you can check attendance through the parent portal as well. And it's really important that you communicate with the school if your child is gonna be off for a period of time due to illness, because we can put things in place to support that missed learning. In addition to that, there's the fortnightly reports that come home. As a parent, I love this system because I would really want to know if something was going wrong with my child before it becomes a big issue. So if you're getting those home and it's threes and fours, that's fantastic. You know, praise your child, reward them. But if ones and twos start to crop up, that's where you have to have the conversations at home. It could be that, you know, they're sitting in the wrong place, they're being a bit chatty in class and they're a bit distracted, but it could be that they're actually struggling, that they don't perhaps understand the work, that they've sort of chosen to avoid the conversation with the teacher rather than asking for help. And it could be that, your conversation empowers them to ask for help, or it could be that you can contact that subject teacher, or you can contact the tutor teacher, or you can contact one of the Akina leaders. It's important to have that person in school that you're able to ask for help because we can always find a solution. Tracking is another important thing. We've talked about the parent portal. Um, on that, you're able to track their assessment calendar, but also how their credits are going. So how many credits they've got. Again, keep an eye on things like not achieved tracking um, that start to sort of come up, but also it's, it's that fantastic opportunity for praise as well. Um, I think through Parent Portal, you can also see fees, um, all of those sort of things, um, their attendance as well. So as I said, there's many layers of support within the school that you can ask for. Um, I would also sort of, advise going to subject teachers if you're wanting to know how you can help it more because they have the subject specialism. There are various sheets that come home with vocabulary and key dates and things like that that they need to learn. And these can be very much used in the same way that the spelling books used to be at primary school. Visiting it often, testing them, doing all that sort of repetitive work is really, really gonna help secure a lot of that information into their long-term memory. 
And often parents can feel a bit disempowered at high school. They don't know the subjects, they don't know the particular content of the course, but a lot of these sheets have all that information on it. You don't need to know it, you just need to test your young person at home on it. In addition to that, are you aware that every Wednesday there is a period six in the library? I think it runs from about 3.30 until 4.30. Um, we have a number of subject specialists that will be in there. If your child could just benefit from a bit more one-to-one -one study, a little bit more support, a little bit more time, and I've, Mr. Allington has just told me there's a bit of food, a bit of kai at the beginning, just to make sure they're not doing all that on a hungry stomach. Thank you very much for your time and supporting your young person here today. If there's anything else we can help you with, please come and chat to us at the back. Thank you.